Okay, I'd like to start the uh, session. I'd like to welcome the public to uh, 6 p.m. Uh, joint session of the Scarborough Town Council and the uh, Plant Scarborough Planning Board for a joint workshop on cell phone towers. Where I'll uh, ask for uh, Town Planner Dan Bacon to make a presentation um, as to the cell phone towers. Um, and then I would like a uh, anything briefly from the uh, Ordinance Committee um, Chair, and then we'll get right into it uh, from uh, planning board members and council members' questions and concerns and statements. So with that, Dan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and thank you, Town Council, planning board members, members of the public. Um, I did want to provide a, a quick PowerPoint presentation to kind of go through the background of this initiative by the Ordinance Committee, um, highlight what was considered and voted on at first reading by the council, and then get into these additional considerations that probably will be the meat of your discussion at the workshop um, today, as well as other ideas that come out of the workshop. Um, so you should have before you a, a packet. There's four different things in your, in your packet. One is just uh, the, the slides of this PowerPoint that you can write on, uh, take notes, and there are two memos. One outlines the original proposal from back in May, the one that was voted on at first reading, and then the one dated um, late August, August 28th, outlines some additional ideas to consider. Um, and lastly, there's there's kind of a there's a bullet points bullet list of some feedback that we just received from our consultant about um, questions about taller towers and their ability to to serve the needs of um, consumers and uh, users in town um, in a more limited area of town. So with that, I'm going to jump right into the presentation. Um, as a matter of background, for those that aren't as familiar with the initiative, um, the Ordinance Committee has been working on it for a number of months, uh, really with the goal of improving wireless coverage in, in Scarborough, particularly in the outlying areas where it's, it's not very good for voice, data, particularly in, in buildings, uh, in homes, things of that nature. Well, at the same time, minimize, trying to minimize the number of additional towers in town, also try to minimize the visibility of them and some impacts that can go along with visibility um, near homes or, or across uh, the marsh, et cetera, and, and to look at really the careful siting of any new facilities in town. As part of this effort, uh, the Ordinance Committee had a consultant um, do some work for the group, and uh, one, of the, one of the important deliverables was um, a sense for existing coverage in the community in a, on a mapped basis. Everybody has their own experience with um, poor coverage and, and quality coverage in certain parts of town, but this is a coverage analysis done, um, and what it shows is in green is that's good coverage in building in buildings um, within the community. What's shown in brown and orange is fairly good coverage in vehicles, in cars, et cetera, but not necessarily within buildings. And then what's shown in white is generally poor coverage. Uh, there may be coverage in that area, but it's not consistent in vehicles or in buildings. That was done by the town's consultant. This map just briefly shows <coughs> where um, wireless towers, transmission towers are allowed today under zoning, and I realize it's hard to see from your seats. Uh, the cross hatching shows that they're allowed in the town's industrial districts, which are also purple, which you probably can see easier than the cross hatching. Um, there's four primary areas um, where they're allowed today. Scarborough Industrial Park off of Pleasant Hill Road, an area off of Muzzy Road close to South Portland, and then an area off Holmes Road and um, the main turnpike. The first proposal at first reading, which is outlined in the memo dated May 28th in your packages, tried to um, tighten up uh, the town's regulations in terms of towers, um, or excuse me, allow for towers in a broader area, but have some tighter standards as to uh, co-location of towers. If there's a new tower going in, expecting that uh, multiple providers um, be required to locate on that same tower versus having multiple towers in the same area with 
uh, one or two tower, one or two providers on each tower, uh, requiring the towers to be designed for expansion for co-location. Um, kind of tied to this, uh, the the initial proposal was to allow taller towers than today. Right now, there's a hundred foot limit to um, transmission towers, and that doesn't allow for co-location of more than really two providers in most areas of town. So increasing the height limit um, to 150 feet would allow you know, five to seven um, antennas or different providers on the same tower. So that's related to trying to require co-location. Another component of the first reading proposal is to better allow for stealth or building mounted antennas, uh, enabling um, antennas to be mounted uh, on top of taller buildings, um, within church steeples, um, on top of maybe transmission lines, power lines, things of that nature, um, which can enable uh, improvements in service without new towers going in in all parts of town. Um, another component which has been, you know, one of the more, uh, one of the components of the proposal that's been, there's been more concerns about is to allow towers in the rural districts of town, the RF, the RFM, and also the village residential four districts. Um, those are actually where port coverage exists, so that's why I was proposed to allow them there. They have larger lots, so um, perhaps they could fit into the area better than the denser parts of town, but that's a component of the first reading proposal. Um, and two other key components were to allow some review criteria for the planning board to require photo simulations, um, illustrations of what towers would look like within the landscape as part of their review process, and to add some requirements about abandoned towers at the end of their life so that they're, they're removed and the site's restored sometime in the future. This map shows you, um, with the cross-hatching again, um, the addition of the rural zones in the village residential four districts um, by allowing them in those districts uh, the cross hatching shows the areas of town they would be uh, permitted on the f under the first reading proposal um, so in light of first reading and public hearings and planning board public hearings there's been a lot of feedback um, and concerns about aspects of the proposal so I just want to walk through that and then and touch on some additional considerations that could help address some of those concerns um, a general concern has, has been just having new towers in residential neighborhoods in particular um, and closer to, to homes and on smaller lots. There's been concerns about just having a large number of new towers, you know, whether these um, regulations will allow, you know, 10, 15, 20 towers throughout the community. Um, there's been concerns about just the general scenic views uh, and impacts of towers and, and what that might do to property values for for um, properties in the vicinity of towers or that can see towers. And in particular, the planning board asked for more tools and more standards um, if they're going to be the review authority uh, for, for new installations. So based on that, the ordinance committee met again um, after the last uh, council and, and planning board review processes and began to consider um, some additional standards or things that can be added to the ordinance to try to get at some of those concerns while still enable improvements in service in town. Um, one of the, the key things that, that both boards could consider uh, this evening is a hierarchy or a stepped review process um, that the planning board could undertake that makes applicants look first um, at more preferred locations for towers before they turn to the least preferred. And so this slide outlines the stepped process, and it, it's tied to some of the goals for co-location and also an interest in seeing towers in industrial or commercial settings versus residential. Um, so step one would need to be, before a tower is proposed elsewhere, consider co-locating a new carrier, a new antenna on an existing tower. If that doesn't meet the needs of um, the desired improvements in coverage, the planning board needs to review that, needs to concur, and then an applicant could go to step two, which would be consider locating a new tower installation in an industrial zone or the Crossroads District, which is a commercial zone at Scarborough Downs. Um, 
So an applicant would need to look at that and see if an installation in those locations um, could improve coverage that they're proposing to improve. Um, the planning board um, could stop there. That could solve uh, the issue. If that's still not achieving uh, the improvement in co coverage, then the planning board needs to concur, and then they can move to a step three, which would be looking at a stealth facility um, on top of a building or in a um, <coughs> overhead power, et cetera, that doesn't have scenic impacts, doesn't have the view impacts that folks are concerned about. And then that needs to be vetted. And then lastly, if these first three steps aren't meeting the needs of um, the public, the users for uh, these devices as well as the industry, then they can turn to uh, the RF, RFM, or VR4 districts, the, the, the rural and residential zones in consideration. In addition to that, those, that's a review process they would need to go through. But in addition, there's some other ideas for additional standards to, for the boards to consider. One is to go back to a lower tower height of 130 feet, which can enable the co-location of five different providers or carriers. That was re what was recommended in the uh, consultant's report. Um, that's going to drop towers down closer to the, the typical um, canopy line or top of, top of tree line. Um, and only in special circumstances could the planning board entertain an increase to 150, um, and that could be written to allow more co-location to prevent additional tower, or if really there's no visual difference in, in um, the height based on review by the planning board. Another thing to consider is to really minimize the requirements in the industrial and the crossroads district to encourage, in addition to the steps process, encourage siting there and you know, having a no minimum lot size, having a more minimal setback uh, for towers to, to encourage those locations and make it easier for the industry to locate in those locations. Another um, consideration and standard, and this is a, I think a, a major change from first reading um, in the rural and the residential district would be to set a very, very high minimum threshold for towers in those areas. And one proposal is to, to set that at 25 acres. That's a significant um, parcel size. Um, there's, there's not that many in the community. It's it's of a size that is potentially, you know, 1,000 feet by 1,000 feet. It would provide significant setbacks to neighborhoods, to residential abutters. And perhaps just as importantly, it, if there's adequate tree cover, it provides a lot of screening. It, if sited appropriately in, in, in the right location in a 25-acre parcel, it would be, in most contexts, pretty hard to see such a tower. Um, so. You know, that's something to allow them in these districts, um, but with a very high threshold in, in protection. A few more additional standards to think about is requiring a monopole style towers. Those are, there's an illustration or a picture of one up here. Um, probably seen those around. They're fairly popular. They're the individual pole. They're not the sort of lattice style towers that are more industrial looking. Um, they, you can see them, of course, but they usually blend in um, in a much easier fashion than the more industrial kind of lattice uh, approach to towers or towers with guy wires that need that have additional infrastructure. Um, the planning board wanted tools in terms of screening and buffering and siting, so we have some ideas on how to strengthen those requirements to give the board some a lot of leverage on uh, where towers would go on a site and the ability to ask of the applicant illustrations and photo simulations of where a tower would be and what it would look like from surrounding landscape, kind of building on the first reading uh, language. Um, and lastly, uh, there's been concern about maybe not having enough teeth in terms of requiring abandoned towers to be taken down. Um, so some communities actually require a performance guarantee up front, some assurity up front. Uh, beyond just a requirement and an ordinance to uh, have funding to actually take the tower down should the, in, should the, uh, the company or the installer not be in existence anymore at the end of the life of the tower, things of that nature. Um, 
So that's kind of where we started, uh, what first reading generally outlined, and then some additional ideas um, to consider as you have a discussion <coughs> this evening. Um, and as I touched on, there is a handout of some additional thoughts by our consultant about the uh, idea of taller towers just in the industrial district. Um, and I'll just quickly touch on that and there can be more conversation about it. Um, but the, it is certainly true that if there's a taller tower, there's going to be a, a wider uh, broadcast of, of a signal within the community. Um, so that certainly would be the case. The, the drawback of um, having just taller towers in, say, the central part of town or just a limited uh, number of districts that are in the central area of the community is more related to having enough signal strength for the penetration of service into buildings and homes over longer distances and having enough um, signal strength for more the data use of smartphones and cell phones versus just the, the voice um, component that takes up more bandwidth, needs more single sig signal strength, um, and so that that is a an issue with just looking at taller towers in a more limited area. It not won't necessarily reach the out, outer lying areas in terms of being in house in building coverage and having the adequate signal strength. Another thing our consultant identified is that. Um, the goal of the industry is is more to have individual towers serving um, cell phone users um, in a way that covers, if you think about circles being the coverage area, having circles that don't necessarily overlap, that, that provide adequate service but don't necessarily overlap. There's with overlapping service, say taller towers and overlapping service in the same areas, there's, it's my understanding, there's interference that um, isn't as good for uh, cell phone use. It also causes more dropped calls. Uh, it's not as ideal uh, as a more distributed approach to towers that, that don't necessarily have overlapping service. Um, but we can talk more about that as you guys have your uh, workshop and discussion. Okay, thank you. Um, what I'll do is I'll start out with um, Kate Sinclair, which um, was the chair of the uh, Ordinance Committee. Uh, if she has any comments to add before we move along. I, I, I don't have questions because I think we're going to try to, I'm sure everyone has some stuff they have to say. I do definitely have a, a list of questions um, for the wireless companies. Um, that I do, I am going to want answers to. Um, I, so I'm not sure I have questions for Dan, but I definitely have a question for the wireless companies at some point. So um, is that, is that tonight, or is that, or maybe someone he could um, provide the answer? Right. Is that if, if they can't, uh, if the answers can't be provided tonight, staff will. Uh, Write the questions down, and uh, we'll we'll get back to uh, you or you and I think the rest of the council at that time. So, because um, I'm sure I'm sure the planning board probably has right. some some stuff that they well maybe maybe not maybe you're satisfied with how the how everything was laid out. Um, I guess going through everything, I want someone to explain to me what a shot clock is. A shot clock? A shot clock, yeah. You, have you, is that not a term that it's you guys have heard? It's not a term familiar to me at all. Uh, I, I, I've read that in the material. Um, okay. Do you understand the, it? Uh, actually, I can't remember exactly. No, 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 no I don't want to put, put, I don't want to put anybody on the no, spot. No, I'm not being <laughs> put on the spot. I just, I remember reading about it. I just don't remember okay. the exact specifics. Yeah, I, I'd like some follow up on that. Yeah, I'm not sure if we can expect answers this evening. Do you want to pose your questions? No, we won't. And then no, I, I, I thought, thought that might take too long because okay. I do have a list and um, I'm still working on that a little bit because the more, and I'm sure this is happening with other people too, um, and I, 
I will admit uh, openly that some of this comes from some of my lack of, of being here for only two years. Um, sometimes what you get on the outside isn't always what's on the inside. And so the more I've delved into this, some of this, the more concerns that I've had. And, you know, um, so I think there are definitely are some questions that need to be answered. And I do want to state pretty firmly that I feel very strongly about not having these towers near any of our residential areas or our schools or other places where we have um, little people at play. Um, it's just my personal belief and for my own personal reasons. But that's why I'm here. So that's why I was elected for my personal beliefs. Um, so I think that's it for me. I, I will say, on the other side of that, a ton of work has gone into this, and a lot of work went into it before all of this additional work that we've piled on staff. Um, so I, I do want to see it wrapped up and, and moving on and progressing. So I don't want to I don't want to boggle it down, um, but I do think we owe it to our citizens. We're, like we keep saying, I think we've said that we, we said this last time I, at, our, at the last big thing where we owe it to our citizens uh -huh. to make sure we're uh -huh. doing what we can do. So that's it for me. Okay, a short answer to your question, short clock. Thank is, you. Uh, uh, it, according, it's an FCC uh, term, short clock. Once a uh, briefly, um, once a uh, uh, provider uh, provides an application to uh, install a cell phone tower, um, action has to be taken within uh, 90 days, um, and a collective application at 150 days to access all other wireless applicants. So municipality has 90 days to act on the, uh, according to this, act okay. on the um, request. From permitted. the wireless company. Correct. So, I mean, it goes on. It's uh, okay. right online. Um, but that's a basic brief question. It, it could go more in depth than that. But okay. that's the best answer I can give you at this no, time. No, that's good. And then maybe um, I can follow up with you guys. I'm sure there will be more questions. And I, whatever else anyone else poses, I, I'm going to want to make sure that okay. we're all getting the answers. So. All right. Um, with that, um, we'll head to um, Planning Board Chair um, Alan Paul. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. the, I am a little confused, I'll have to admit up front, from the standpoint of trying to separate my planning board thoughts from my personal thoughts at times. Um, <laughs> but I, I think it's that <clears throat> the recent information that has been released by staff has come a long way in terms of where it stood when you had your first reading. Um, Planning board concerns at that time, as I recall, largely were surrounded by the fact that there was not much that was very enforceable by us, that it was very, very broad based, um, that, that it would be extremely difficult for us to, and I don't want to use the word limit, but to be able to use good logic and evaluation of the ordinance as written to place tower. So our concern was, I'll call it, put a little more meat on the bones so that we could physically have something that we could look at, we could um, have good debate on and come to good conclusion on what would be good areas or not good areas once they were in front of us. Um, certainly things of concern concerns mentioned by uh, people were items like our view cards, um, wanting to make sure that we just don't block the view corridors, some of the beautiful view corridors we have here in town, by setting a tower, right? Trying to minimize, try to limit where we're going to put things. Like, it would be a shame to stick something in a marsh or, you know, I, and I, maybe that's going overboard, but just having that ability to use that 
potentially as one of the decision-making criteria mm -hmm. that we would want to look at to see how a view corridor would be impacted, much like we might do the same thing with a residential develop development that um, might be um, uh, in involving structures that, that impacted other items, right? Um, another item that came up that I thought was of interest was having language that doesn't necessarily relate specifically to residential zoning. In other words, try to make a distinction between residential zoning and residential areas. And if I can expand on that a little mm -hmm. bit, from my perspective, a residential area is where you have a cluster of houses uh -huh. close by one another, right? You have a neighborhood, you have whatever. But there could be pieces of property within a residential zone that might in fact be large enough or or have the ability to be able to house a tower that would not block view corridors, that would not be overly obstructive, that would not uh, raise the same concerns as something that you would have in a in a more populated residential area. So we were trying to look to see if there is some way to make a distinction between that and a residential zone when we actually get into language of the document, which obviously makes things a little harder on you, uh, Dan, and, and Long Range Planning Committee as they, you know, or the Ordinance Committee for that matter, um, as they try to do that. Um, one of the items that is a little more newer, didn't come out of our first meeting, but has since come in some conversations is, Have we really looked at all of the technologies that are available today to enhance cell service coverage? And one of the things I mean by that is there is now newer technologies where they can put smaller antennas on telephone poles. So if you're in a residential area, you have a much smaller antenna serving a much smaller populace of people, right? So you don't have the same kind of power emissions. You don't have all of those other things, but you also certainly do not have that visible structure that is going to come into play. So have we talked about the other technologies or the emerging technologies mm -hmm. that are out there and available? And I'll, I'll bring my personal opinion into this at this point, but are we rushing before we understand what those technologies might be so that we don't have a tower that's going to be set in place and be there for years and years and years to come when technology is right around the corner that may make that no longer necessary. So I just think that we should be asking maybe questions regarding what, to, what new technology is available, is it something that's applicable, and not make the mistake of going to something because of cost. Right? If the cell tower manufacturers want to put up the, the big towers because it costs a lot less than putting smaller antennas or stuff in place, uh -huh. then should that be our concern? No. All right? So just something I think that we ought to be looking at. Um, and again, uh, broad, I had down here broad brush changes was kind of what was proposed originally, I think that that's going away and I think we're zeroing in mm -hmm. uh, much better in terms of um, what we can be looking for. Um, in, in your steps that you mentioned, your four steps, mm -hmm. I would almost like to see a fifth that might actually get and raise the question regarding technologies. Are there technologies that are going to change? Because as I sit on the planning board today, I won't be there next year, and somebody else will be there the year after that. Mm -hmm. And we're constantly going to be looking for the ability to improve coverage faster, better, quicker, all of those items. Let's make sure that we build into an ordinance today some of those things that allow us <coughs> to be able to look at newer technologies tomorrow um, so that we're not just being satisfied with status quo and that we're constantly mm -hmm. pushing and challenging companies uh, to bring us something that could be more aesthetically pleasant to the town. Um, 
obviously providing something that's very enforceable. The ordinance language needs to be enforceable. So we want to make sure that we don't leave a lot of gaps and holes in it. And in terms of tower heights, um, I would like to know if there's something that we might be able to do with zones, uh, particular zones around town, like the industrial zone, for example, may allow us to have a larger tower. It's less impactful to uh, the local community, if you will, in our industrial areas. Put the larger towers there and then use maybe smaller technology uh, as we get into more highly visible areas. So uh -huh. those are, that's my original thoughts um, that I have from past meetings and uh -huh. where I stand today. I don't know, John, if you have anything else to add to that. That's why I enjoy you being the chair. You say all we need to say. Alan, I do have um, I, I, everything you uh, touched on. I do agree with um, the uh, microcell technology. Um, we're looking into it right now. We think it's already here in, in town, but uh, we need to investigate a little more. It's pretty tight-lipped on whether it is or not. Um, but the biggest thing that I got from that I find um, that's hard to manage is view corridors, okay? Um, you, you talk about view corridors from the marsh. Well, I mean, I spent my whole entire life on that marsh uh, as a little boy right up to an adult, teenage years. And you look all out on from the marsh, out on all the mainland, you can see all the towers and everything, wherever you look. Um, lot in in though that time that's gone by from when I was a child till now, there's been a tons and tons and tons of houses built along the edge of the marshes within you know um, within reason. But um, no matter where you put one, um, those view corridors are going to happen. You spoke about the industrial zone. Um, let's talk about right down down the road here, down where public works are. Um, that's an industrial zone. That what You could well put up a tower there. That's going to bother somebody's view corridor. So um, I, I don't know whether that's avoidable or not. And, uh, you know, the whole idea of, you know, doing this is to try to work, you know, um, with the planning board so we have a good plan going forward. Um, if, those, if a new technology comes along and, and the cell phone tower companies take advantage of that, that tower's got to come down. That's in our ordinance. So um, I mean, this is a tricky, um, a tricky ordinance mm -hmm. to try to get through. And from you know where we started, I, I knew right from the beginning that we were going to have um, comments from the public, and it would need further work. Right from the get-go, I, I said that. So um, this is where we're at now, which is good. It's part of the process and uh, involving the planning board with their as you know, uh, aspects on it is great. And I welcome um, every, you know, even further on down the road here, um, you can always, it's always to have a, a second pair of eyes on, on it. So um, I, I just, like I said, the only issue I had was the view court is I, I don't know what we do about that. It, it can well, I, I definitely agree with mm -hmm. you that you're always going to have some obstruction. I guess the question is, is does the obstruction need to be 50 feet above everything else, uh -huh. or does it need to be 15 feet above everything else? Right. And if, so when I think in terms of you yeah. corridors, I guess uh -huh. part of my thought process there right. is to, to look at how we may be able to limit heights in right. certain areas mm -hmm. where you're going to get that um, right. you know that, that long distance view. Right? There's no question. Yep. No, no matter what ordinance gets adopted, some people aren't going to like it, mm -hmm. some people are going to think it's great, yep. other people aren't going to care at right. all. Right? So the, the, the goal from my standpoint at this mm -hmm. point is to how do we minimize the amount of people who don't like it? Mm -hmm. right. right. I mean, that's really the goal because we're not going to be able to satisfy everybody, but let's try to maximize how many people we can. Mm -hmm. 
and in order to make this ordinance uh, a, a fairly good one, uh, it takes it, it, it's taken the input from the public, the input from the planning board. The, the only thing that's really missing that I'm having difficulties with is the input from the cell providers. Right. It's very tight-lipped, and we, we I mean, we put out our feelers several times. I think what Dan three times now. And it's it's just difficult getting, you know, because uh, if we had the information that we needed, we could say, no, oh, we don't need to build any towers over 120 feet, maybe. Right. Um, or, um, you know, maybe um, there is a better idea to go with. But it's, it, this has been difficult going forward. So I'm in no rush to get it done now. So I meant we'll, at some point, but okay. if we don't get the cooperation that we need, it's hard to make a good decision. On, on these issues. Can I just make one comment to you or follow up? Yes. Um, when you're ready. Um, did you have anything? No, I'm good. Okay. All right. Okay, um, just a quick follow up too. And I agree with Richard with pretty much everything you said. Um, the one thing I want to say that while, yes, we want to, because we are a town, a municipality, and we want things, we want revenue coming in, and we need income, and we all these other things, we want to provide the cell phone tower the cell phone providers with that professional courtesy, there is without a doubt, and I never speak for my other counselors, but I feel I could probably very much clearly say that there's never a doubt that our first priority is our is our town's people. I don't have any, I, we're going to take as long as we want to take and as long as we need to take, and they owe us some, some answers to some of our questions, and we're going to get those, I or we're so. not going to work with them, and I think that's basically how I, at least, again, how I feel about it. They, the rest, everyone else might not feel quite that strongly, but I know, I believe in, in them and that to answer that question, this is, to me, in my own personal opinion, has nothing to do with helping the cell phone tell providers. This is helping my community and what it needs. No. So. Councilor Holbrook is next. I can't not have two cents. Right. I always have to have two cents. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I have you know, full confidence that between planning board and ordinance committee that, that you folks can come together with the I's and the T's of how tall and where and what tree to plant and what's visually less impactive and co-locating and, and that sort of thing. Um, I think what I'm looking for as, as a counselor is not something that's going to be able to be answered here. I'm, I'm looking for feedback from the cell phone companies. There's, um, for, for me as a counselor, what I'm looking for, my number one goal priority is life safety. So what I'm interested in and what I do want to see us achieve is that if you are traversing through this town on any of the roads, you have an adequate enough cell phone signal to reach emergency services. I'm a little less interested in how well your son or daughter might play their video game on their iPhone in the basement of my house, but I want life safety addressed. Um, and that's a fairly simple equation, I would think, for these cell phone companies. You, we've already understand the fact that there is circles, and they don't want their circles to overlap. So. My, my best question to them would be, could you show me a plan of some kind of varying level of, if we want to meet coverage at the cell phone usage level, if we want to meet coverage at cell phone data levels, and, and so forth, what do you need to do that to fill your gaps? Um, there's reasonable coverage in these orange places. There's even very good coverage in these green places. But as you see, there's large tracts that are white. And again, I appreciate that there's towers somewhat in place now and there's circles and, and whatnot. Well, you know where your holes are. What do you need to plug them? I mean, that should be a fairly simple question. What do you need? And what do you need for each level of service provided? So if we just want to address the cell phone signal itself to make a phone call, if we want to address the higher usage of in-home business, being able to really connect through you know, the data and things like that, um, 
and where, where that is likely to need to be, because as we, they've already said, they're not going to put another tower in a place they've already got one. It's going to need to be somewhere else. Um, so that's my main million dollar question for, for me as a counselor. Um, I said I'm sure the rest of those, how tall the trees need to be and, and where will get ironed out. Okay, Council Benedict. <coughs> I'm gonna go back to the first meeting that we had with the small tower people. And I almost got in an argument with them, which was not my purpose. Where I live, I'm two and a half miles from a tower that is across the street from King's Farm. And I'm also at a right angle, eh, two and a half miles from the tower that is at the, I'm not sure the name of the school, Sherbrooke. Springbrook Park. Springbrook. Springbrook and the, the park right there. Now, the guy from Verizon who was who I have my service through told me, Oh, you're gonna get the best coverage in the world. You got that you got that tower down there at King's they're all set up there. I said, No. I gotta go out of my driveway mm. and I went through six different providers before getting a phone. Because this one didn't work and that one didn't work and the other one didn't work. And I don't need this you know the baby. I get an old phone, which is fine. Let me call the number, receive a number, and get a picture and a text. That's it. I don't need anything else. Not one of these newfangled things. Well, not new anymore, but to me they are. I think it's time to reverse this process a little bit. And the reason I say that is we're groping and prodding I think now I'd like to have cell phone companies come back to us and say, this is what we think we you need. We don't have that, do we? Mm -hmm. So, we've, we've, we've posted uh, a number of questions staff have come up with on three different occasions. Quite frankly, I've solicited input from counselors, questions, and perhaps you've uh, new ones have come to mind since I, I last asked you that. Um, I'm not surprised that they're a bit tight-lipped. This is highly proprietary information. Um, although I think Dan and I have been surprised on a couple of occasions, they've been quite forthcoming. And yeah. uh, you know, part of our request of them was with the promise of confidentiality. And so right. uh, we've shared that information with members of council, and I think we need to respect that. So we will renew that if there are specific questions counselors have. Uh, the sooner you get them to us, the better, and we'll put them out there. We can't twist their arm and have them uh, provide us answers. Right. Um, I guess the <coughs> final point is that my recollection is this emanated, this, this whole thing, the impetus came from this committee. I don't recall mm -hmm. responding to an outside inquiry from the providers. So uh, this is a process that began with the ordinance committee and and uh, mm -hmm. continues up until tonight, uh, 10 months along. No, so there has been one provider in particular that's pretty much been with us from that very first ordinance right. meeting that we had, in an, yeah. and was Veri Verizon was there right from the very beginning. And um, I will say, too, also, staff has been amazing. I, I personally, for personal reasons, couldn't get my questions to Tom last week. Um, so my list of questions, that's the reasoning behind that. That is nothing to do with staff not getting it back to me. Um, so I'll get those, you Great. know, follow up with you on those. Sure. But, Jim, I just, just so you know, it definitely hasn't been a staff issue at all. Um, no, I, didn't, I, I yeah. didn't think it was. But it seems to me that if Dan and his apartment up there can provide a map like this show and the coverage is here and the coverage is there, well, okay, what do you propose to do? Well, <coughs> the industry has provided us information on a handful of sites, and the handful of sites are generally in the RF district. Right. Um, and that's in part, it's a large part as to why, you know, if you're looking to improve coverage under what the industry is hoping to achieve, that's why staff has included in the list of considerations, including the RF, 
but trying to do uh, the most you can do in terms of requirements to minimize concerns about being in a residential neighborhood, to minimize scenic impacts, et cetera. And that's why ideas of requiring 25 acres, and maybe that's not the right number, maybe it's a different number in terms of an acreage threshold, requiring um, review criteria for the, for the planning board, requiring a step process that you don't first look to the RF district, you look to these other areas that seem to be more comfortable for, for constituents and, and the council, like the industrial, um, but it's been made clear by the industry that they are interested in um, you know, two to four sites in the RF district, um, and that they are also interested in locating in the Pleasant Hill industrial area, but there are some industrial areas that exist that are redundant. They're already too close to existing towers that citing another tower doesn't make sense for them in terms of improving coverage. Um, so they have been somewhat tight-lipped on the locations, but the RF, um, from their perspective, is a, is a need. So that's a question, a big policy question, you know, for for this group as to you know, how you manage that, um, or if. All right. Um, Councilor Caterino is next. Um, just very quickly, I know this is going to be a reiteration, but I mean, to me, it's just show me where the towers need to go. <laughs> I mean, to be real basic, I'm looking back here at the at the cell tower guys. Um, if we had a better idea of where you thought you wanted to place them. It would be helpful. Uh, and then my other question is, and Alan, this is actually for you, and I don't know if you can answer it or not. Are you talking about DAS when you're talking about the antennas on, or maybe you don't know, it's just something that you had heard? No, I, I don't know. That's a yes. Don't we have one? Okay. We have and, and I would just want to know, and I think I already know the answer to this, but what's the difference between DAS and microcells? Because I think there's a difference. There is a difference. Yeah, there's yeah. a big the difference. Chicken you can get it online and look at it. The microcells are little taller towers yeah. where the DAP is just basically antennas off poles. Right, right. And, and I think with DAS you're going to open another whole can of worms with people with concerns with health issues. Right. No, so I know that. I've heard, we've heard that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just, yeah, just to reiterate what Dan said, uh, without getting into specifics, yeah. we're aware of three sites. Yeah. That there's active interest, perhaps yeah. even under contract. All of right. those sites are I believe in the RF zone. Is that right, Dan? Right. The RF and, and the VR. And the VR4. Right. And so the simple truth is, and let me take a step back, it's it's somewhat remarkable that the the goals of the industry are the goal are the similar goals to right. the, the, the council, which is to improve coverage. Theirs is to get customers, ours is to have a residence have better coverage. So right. we have that basic goal in common. Right. And the simple truth is if you want to do that, Towers need to go in zones other than right. uh, the industrial zone. That's the simple truth of this. All right, and then but the um, limiting where they can go by the 25 acre sure. um, rule. Um, you know, a pretty. It, you know, I meant we're not. It's not. Not everybody's going to get the coverage, but that's what it's going to take to uh, satisfy neighborhoods and stuff. And, um, that's. I meant that's where we got to go with it. Um, I have, uh, <laughs> Jim and Paul. Yes, thank you. I guess this is more of a question. If we're going to be asking cell companies a question, if we're going to be asking a consultant a question, one of the questions that I would love to see asked is, if we had no cell towers at all today, right. and we were approaching this with a clean piece of paper, where and what would we put for coverage? Mm. Because if if we let them say that um, we don't want to put another tower in this location because it's too close to another one, well, maybe the first one isn't the right one to begin with. And maybe we should be looking with a clean mm -hmm. set of eyes as to how would we design the system for the best possible coverage with the least amount of uh, of Construction and the, and, the, and the least amount of towers cover the town the way we like to see it covered. So we have some of the answers to that. I, I, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. So that's some of our classified information. 
classified information that we've promised to cell to cell town cell to excuse me Company. cell tower providers that we would not openly share the information that they've shared with us. So we do have, also to Councillor Katarina, because you had mentioned that, we do have some of those locations. Um, uh, yeah, please, I'm sorry, go. And if we rewind a little bit, this assessment um, was part of the report that our consultant put together, which included current coverage and then he recommended or identified I should say, potential sites in the community using town land as one means right. to locate sites um, to provide, I'll say, A-plus service in town. You know, very, very strong in-building service. Essentially, the town was entirely green, um, if you think about coverage and um, what that's denoting. Um, that, and the approach to that was to distribute them evenly around the community. Um, and that was his, the consultant's recommendation. Um, he wasn't recommending the town necessarily pursue towers on certain town properties. He was just showing if you're going to use town properties, this is a way to do it to evenly distribute the <laughs> towers. Right. So that, that's a balancing act with, okay, some of those locations are you know rural or residential zones. And so that's part of the crux of the right. issue in terms of how you enable that. Okay, Councilor Donovan. Uh, I thought the uh, ordinance committee's work was a good start. And I think uh, what uh, Dan did with the tiered approach is uh, a, a huge step forward to creating an orderly process whereby you have to prove that uh, uh, industrial zones are not satisfactory <coughs> that uh, uh, these other conditions that uh, uh, a stealth uh, placement uh, is not available before you ever get to the RF zone. And I particularly like the uh, uh, super large size lot. I think we err on the side of caution in the first instance. What we don't want is unintended consequences mm -hmm. of the placement of these uh, facilities uh, near neighborhoods and I think we can do an analysis and have been doing an analysis at the staff level that will give us comfort that uh, uh, we will not uh, uh, achieve, uh, uh, we will not inadvertently result in a, uh, uh, a tower uh, in a dense neighborhood. We need to protect the neighborhoods. I think that's number one. But there are areas in the RF zone that will appropriately accommodate large, large tracts of land that are large, and the area itself in which they are situated is, is relatively undeveloped. And, and those are perfect for uh, extending the kinds of coverage that, as we understand the technology better, uh, the uh, industry, I think, would welcome. So I think those are all uh, good. Uh, I was encouraged by the Planning Board Chairman's comments that the process that we're now getting to affords the planning board the ability to do a site plan review where they actually can control uh, uh, many of the risks uh, and adverse outcomes. That to me is, that was critical that we, we reached that point where the planning board had a comfort level. They know site plan review. Uh, some of us who haven't sat on planning boards for a long time <coughs> don't remember uh, uh, how important that is as a tool within a town so that you don't get unfortunate uh, outcomes uh, uh, within a community. So I thought that was important. Uh, the view corridor uh, suggestion I think is interesting because I do think, and I hadn't thought of this in terms of uh, a certain percentage of the structure has to be shielded uh, 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 from view and that that may actually be a basis that we could work with, that uh, you're not going to have a 130-foot structure standing out on a bald hill and have 130 feet uh, of exposure. Because many of these sites, the objective is to have tree stands of 80, 90, 100 feet surrounding them. And I like the provision that says you can't remove that as a part of getting site plan approval so that they're going to remain in place. So that, that struck me uh, as good. Uh, uh, the increased uh, uh, the industrial zone 
easing, easing of conditions in the industrial zone seems to me to be a very good idea, and maybe we can go further, uh, because uh, uh, certainly the uh, information we got from the consultant that we were looking at tonight uh, indicates that there is some value in making uh, cell towers higher. Uh, and so uh, maybe easing the, the restrictions on, uh, uh, on industrial zones, which I don't think is in the present proposal, uh, that would be that would be something that we could consider, uh, and I, cer I certainly like the mandatory condition of co-location. I think we're not going to end up with a lot of towers because what has evolved with this uh, proposal is that it it isn't just that we want co-location; it's that we're mandating co-location. Uh, so that if you, you have to prove to the planning board that uh, co-location will not work for uh, your needs before you can go past that point in the process. Uh, and therefore, uh, we will have some very good sites, hopefully super large sites, uh, hopefully in very rural settings. Uh, and uh, once they're there, uh, everyone who wants to add uh, to, the, to their service is going to have to co-locate on those poles. So I liked, I liked a lot of what's been done. <coughs> Council Blaze. Um, I just want to get back to the uh, cell tower height. We've been asking about what is the coverage for a 100-foot tower, what is the coverage for a 200-foot tower. I keep on getting a run around, run around, run around. Um, the truth is, the higher the tower, the, the greater the range, because the, it's line of sight. So the higher you are, the further you can look out. Now the problems, <coughs> I think what the problems that the cell phone companies are talking about is that they don't want to pump those signals out that far. And they're saying, well, you know, my transmitter is not powerful enough to go out that way. <laughs> not our problem, you know. I think the cell companies have a responsibility to the people that they're serving to do a little bit more investment in their cell towers, their transmitters, and providing the service. They can't expect us to allow cell towers to go every place. Right. That's, that's not right. Um, for that reason, I think that our, our ordinance should stress a 200-foot cell tower limit in the industrial zones. And we have enough industrial zones. You know, a 200-foot tower would cover 628 square miles, or 10, 10 times the, uh, the size of Scarborough. Now, if that's really true, and it's got to be true, then why why are we keeping, why do we keep on running into these, oh, my network, we can't have overlapping circles. Sorry, but you're going to have overlapping circles. Deal with it. Uh -huh. um, I like, I like the ordinance. I like the, the changes to it. Uh, I like taking a look at the new technology. I think that's really, really important. Um, one thing, though, that I would suggest is if you go all the way down through, can't use a 200-foot tower, I need a 130-foot tower over in the RF zone. If you get to that point uh, and it goes through the planning board, they go through the review and they approve it, to me, something like that has got to come to the town council because, to me, that's a zoning change. So I would, I would want to see something like that added. Okay. I don't think that we'll ever have to put cell power in the RSO. Okay. So I stand. All right, Mr. Dupont. Anything I'm else? I'm all set. Okay, uh, Councilor Holbrook, did you have something else? Sure. Um, <clears throat> two, two quick things. I guess. Um, I do want to touch base on the 25 acres, although I, um, it, it's intriguing because it does have a, a much bigger, you know, possibility of, of 
really specifically pinpointing where, where the allowed use is going to be. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I, I like the concept of a bigger number. I don't know how I feel about 25 acres, just because you're talking no building, no nothing. So I guess too, maybe a little consideration. We're talking RF, and I'm thinking of, I don't know where the towers need to go, but mm. I mean, I'm thinking of who, who's the large landowners over there that have that kind of acreage, mm -hmm. and what are the activities that are being done there? and you know, to, to give up 25 acres and maybe not have any use of that property might be counterproductive to, to what that site's trying to do. Right. Um, I like the concept of a bigger number. I don't know that I'm sold on the bigger number. And mm -hmm. I think, again, that might have more to do with what's the allowed use on that site. You know, if you're tree harvesting, if you're farming mm. in agriculture, can you still have an accessory building that's to the purpose of, of that? You know, so again, you know, kind of some of that tweaking w for me and in, in investigation would be good. Um, maybe, I, I don't know, I mean, it's a very limited resource of people that own mm -hmm. that amount of contiguous property. So again, maybe even a little outreach just to see what well, what are you doing on your property. Right. And there's um, some in the RF district there's some you know, properties that are in, in either public hands okay. or quasi public <coughs> hands. You have say Eco Main has an incredible amount of acreage okay. mm. off of Running Hill Road. Mm. Um, there's other mm -hmm. there's town property, there's other utilities okay. or organizations that have large tracts of land that are maybe already in use but aren't residential neighborhoods yeah. um, and so like to that end um, there there is some potential for for those kinds of arrangements and then I think to your point also there needs to be some consideration as to our private property owners going to be willing to kind of foreclose on 25 acres are they going to sign a lease uh, for a tower and then not want to do future sub further subdivision so some consideration needs to be given to the tower goes in and it's 25 acres and it's undeveloped. What then is the what's a reasonable allowance for additional use mm -hmm. of that land? You know what needs to remain with the tower to screen it and to to protect all the things we've been talking about views, property values, but still enable that land to be used with some minor amount of subdivision or development. So yeah, to your point, we need to kind of work through those scenarios. Right. So. Pardon me? Not that for me. Okay. Well, we have to go on to our um, council meeting. Um, obviously, um, the ordinance is going to need more work. Um, I welcome input from the planning board, even the members that weren't here tonight, and um, we'll uh, work on it some more. Come up with the uh, with an ordinance and uh, go through the process again. Yeah. Just procedurally, uh, this matter uh, was tabled to the September 17 meeting, so it, will, it is on your agenda. Mm -hmm. It will come back as it was approved in first reading. Uh, any further changes would need to be done by formal amendments. And okay. um, and I are certainly right. willing to help draft that yeah. when we need direction as and to what. Yeah, right. maybe we could set up some time to meet Alan and with Tom and um, Richard and Dan and maybe yeah. try to hammer a couple things out. Right. Yeah. Make ourselves thank you. available. Okay, oh, one more quick. Just very quickly, I just want to thank oh. Councilor Sullivan, Chairman Sullivan, for inviting us to come to this. I think it's very beneficial for us to get together mm -hmm. so that we don't miscommunicate and everybody gets mm -hmm. to hear the same thing. And I you know, thank the, uh, the town council for allowing us to come to this. So look forward to working closely like this again in the future. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll take a couple of minutes and we'll be starting with the uh, regular town council meeting.